Michelle. So stick with me and we're gonna get into all of the nitty gritties. I'm using Rust-Oleum wood stain. I got a mallet. I got a paint stir stick, a plastic bag. Oh, I got some rags and some sandpaper. Don't worry, it's all gonna be in the list of supplies. And some more dirty rags. So here we go. Are you ready to get started? I know I am. First thing you are going to need is some black paint. So for this project, I am using my own brand of black chalked paint. It is called Redesigned Relics Plaster Paint. And I will have a link to my Facebook page where you can purchase it in the description. Um, take note that I'm just painting the very top part black. That very top part was actually a reddish color. I didn't show you in some of the before pictures, um, but that's what it looked like before. Um, it doesn't really matter how you put your, your coats of paint on. You can go back and forth. You can do crisscross. Um, any way you want to get it on, just get that paint on there. So we're going to go ahead and paint both of the top pieces black, and I'll go ahead and let you guys watch that and pop back on to tell you what else we're doing next. Now, a tip that I have for you is to use plastic bags to put your paintbrush in if you're going to be using it later. Um, a lot of the times what I'll do is actually spray my paintbrush with some water, put it in the plastic bag, and then I just set it aside for later. And now it's later. So I'm just gonna use that paintbrush again. And we're going to go ahead and paint the very top pieces, as you can see. Um, eventually, you will see that we are going to be painting the fronts of the drawers black, along with the, uh, the, the handle sort of piece of the drawer black, which is just a built-in handle that's also wood. And here we go with the drawers. So make sure that you pull them out slightly. You can take them all the way out if you'd like. Uh, make sure you get the very top part of the drawer so that doesn't show or reveal when the drawer is shut. Um, so you see everything is painted. Make sure you get the very, very side parts of the drawer, not the entire side unless you want to, but just a, a little bit along the side. Oh, that was me being a cat. Um, I don't know, weird day. Um, but we're just gonna continue on with painting these drawers. So enjoy watching me paint the drawers. And now that our first coat has dried, it is time for coat number two. So we're just going to apply that in the same manner as coat number one, and then move on to our other color, which is a light teal color. Um, I did go ahead and mix this color myself. I purchased regular teal color, and then I mixed it with white and then I did make my chalk paint out of this paint. Like I said, I do make my own chalk paint, redesigned relics plaster paint, and you will find a link in the description if you'd like to purchase some. Um, it's really great paint, it's really durable. If you haven't seen my video about the benefits of plaster paint or of chalk paint and how to use it, um, feel free to check that out as well. I'll put a link at the end of the video to this and in the description. So here we go, I'm just doing a little bit of mixing. I really enjoy mixing colors. Um, I think it's fun, that way you can get whatever color you want. Um, so en enjoy watching me mix some paint. And there we go. I think I have the color that I like. It's, it's a nice light shade of teal. It's exactly what I was looking for. Um, just gonna go ahead and I'm dumping some more in this this white container uh, lightening it up just a, a little bit more and eventually I'll have the exact shade I was looking for 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the drawers out. There was my daughter. There's the color. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint the body of it with this light teal color. Now you might notice that I do have some painter's tape running along some areas that I don't want to, that's already painted black, that I don't want to paint teal. Um, for painter's tape, my trick is you put the painter's tape on, then you put just a really light uh, clear coat, whether it be um, even just Mod Podge, any kind of a light clear coat that goes over both the painter's tape, about a quarter of an inch up, and then over the place that you're going to be painting about a quarter of an inch down. Then you wait for that to dry, of course, and then you go ahead and paint your color. So what happens is the clear coat that you've applied seals the painter's tape in. So there's no way that the color can leak through to your, for example, to the black. So I have that blue painter's tape there. And when I take it off, it'll be a nice smooth line because I've literally provided a barrier. I know that a lot of painter's tape claims that it, you know, it, it won't bleed or any of that stuff, but I honestly haven't found any that doesn't, um, that, that doesn't bleed. So that's my trick. It works perfect. You get a nice clean line and I suggest that you do the same as well. And now it is time to use just a smaller paintbrush. This is an artist paintbrush that I'm using. And I'm just gonna go ahead and touch up any areas that look like they need touched up. Um, in addition, I don't have painter's tape on this. So you might notice the technique that I'm using. I'm basically just putting the paint on and then dragging the brush across and it, cre it creates a nice clean line for you. So you just drag it across both ways, and then you don't have to use painter's tape. Um, so that's, a, that's another trick for you, but it does take a bit of a talent, and dragging it across at more of an angle, I know mine was more straight, but if you drag it across at more of a diagonal angle, then it works very well also. Um, once you get done with both of your layers of paint, you're going to want to use a very high grit sandpaper um, mine is actually like 400, but you could probably get away with 220 as long as you're going light. And you just want to smooth that paint out. Um, plaster paint is wonderful in that way because you can just sand it to make it smooth. So here we go again with some more black, just touching up some areas to make sure that it's um, a nice, clean, smooth finish. Um, looks like right there I didn't use painter's tape because I was so confident in myself and I accidentally uh, got some color on the wrong spot so um, there's there's a lesson to be learned there um, you might notice how crisp the edge is on that middle piece because I did use that painter's tape with the clear coat um, over the top of it before I painted my green or my uh, teal I should say so another trick that I have is using the blow dryer and using the blow dryer helps the paint dry faster. So you can do that as well. I'm getting ready to do the glazing on my item and glazing a lot of the times is done with something called furniture glaze, but I prefer to glaze with wood stain. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's thinner, to me it's easier to work with, um, it's less expensive and it gives a great look. So to start the glazing process, um, as you can see, you just dip your rag in the wood stain and you just kind of rub it in to all that paint. So the chalk paint is very uh, porous. That means that the wood stain is not just going to sit on top of it, but it'll actually soak into it. Um, so we can see here that not only did I apply it to the blue surface, but I also applied it to the black surface. If you apply the stain over the black as well, it deepens the black. It gives it just a little more dimension. And then after applying that stain, as you can see, I want to give it, 
I don't want the color to be completely even. I want to give it just like, like I said, a little bit of dimension. So that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm kind of patting it. And you can see right there, that's what it looks like after it's been glazed. Don't forget to wear your gloves. I don't always wear gloves and I end up getting stain all over my uh, cuticles. They just don't want to come off. So um, I suggest that you wear gloves when you're staining. I don't think the stain's very good for your hands. Um, but what you want to do is just continue on with using your wood stain over all of your painted areas. And then we'll see what we do next because we are not done yet. And now it is time to apply the stain or glaze to the body of your project. Now, I don't know if you could see it, but the stain that I am using for this is called Jacko Bean. And Jacko Bean is just kind of a, a just a darker brownish walnut-y sort of color. Um, I do like to start in the uh, corners. That way it looks a little bit more natural. The point of the glaze is to give the furniture kind of a, an antique aged look. So I always like to start right where it might just kind of set in those corners. Um, because when things are antique and aged and things like that, you know, they get a little, a little dingy in the corners. So that's why I start in the corners. And as I'm applying this glaze, I'm pretty much wax on, wax off. Or, you know, wipe on, wipe off. The longer you let the glaze sit on the furniture, or the furniture, uh, the, the longer you let the wood stain sit on the furniture, the more the chalk paint is going to soak it in. So you don't want to just put glaze all over your piece and then wipe it off. You want to do it in sections. And like I said, rather than just like wiping it on and then just wiping it off, after you get done wiping it off, kind of dab it, not the kind of dance weird dab thing with your with your arms um, but but dab it next step are you ready for this one this one is fantastic we're gonna take that aqua or antique aqua colored stain and put it just in the middle parts of our drawers so as you can see I'm putting it in the middle and then I'm slowly blending it out to the sides so this is gonna give it even more depth and dimension. So just kinda pay close attention as to how I'm blending, I'm using circular motions, and you know, I'm just, I'm just blending it out to where the outside still stays darker, and then the inside gets lighter. I'm going to do this with all of the drawers, and then I'm also going to do it with the entire body of the piece. Now, I will not be applying the antique aqua to the black. Um, I don't think I need to explain why we want the black to stay black. Um, but if you did, for some reason, want to kind of give it a little interesting color, you could, you could try that too. So the, the, uh, the wood stain comes in a lot of different colors besides wood color. So you've got the antique aqua color, and you have the, um, there's like a barn red color that literally is barn red. So there's, there's endless possibilities when you're using wood stain as your glaze. You know, and let's talk about the awesome workout that you're gonna get while applying this glaze. Look at that, like, can't you see me getting buffer by the minute? So if, if anything else, you're gonna get really, really buff by doing my technique. So you can thank me later for, you know, getting in shape and all that stuff. Um, but just go ahead and, and have fun with the stain and do it how you want. You could do it in stripes. You could do it in like how I did it with the it blending out. There's a lot of different options. And this is what it looks like fairly well finished. So I wanna thank you so much for watching. Um, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It would really help out my channel and help me be able to push more videos out like this. And I have a couple videos I'd like you to check out as well. That's it for now. So you have a fantastic day.